So consumers are being told by the brands, this material is better for the environment than this material. You'll buy a leather jacket and it doesn't change style, it doesn't go out of fashion. Vegan leather, well, that's plastic. Well, fast fashion is, um, I think it's, it's negative. S simply put, it's, it's, it's incredibly negative because we are um, incentivizing an increasing consumption of a finite uh, resource planet. So slow fashion, from my understanding, is shopping less and having more key pieces that will last you longer. So rather than spending 400 pounds a month on loads of fast fashion items that you're not gonna want in a year, they fall apart, and spending that 400 pounds on a key piece that you're gonna have for the next 10 years. By over consuming any one thing, food, uh, fashion items, you are going to have a negative impact on, on your ecosystem and on the, on the planet. So you need to look at the, the level of consumption and understand that sometimes less consumption is better, but better consumption is better. I went to a school in Paris and after two years I was hired by Hermes and started working for them and did that for 14 years. 30 years ago, everything shifted from handmade to mass production. But I think things are starting to revert back to a more traditional craft and appreciation for unique pieces. So for me, luxury can be everyday use. If you buy a product that has been well made, well created, you will have it, you could use it for every day for 20 years. And it will last. So that's for me the true essence of luxury, is a piece that was created to last. Leather is seen as a premium product, and quite rightly so. It has premium properties, so we mustn't forget that. But actually, it should be more every day. It should be more high street. And we often think about price point, and you can't, uh, you can't match the cost of a plastic pair of shoes, for example. However, if your plastic pair of shoes are wearing out, and so you're buying two or three pairs of plastic shoes to the one pair of leather shoes that you would buy, then you have to think about the economies of scale there and you're still gonna spend just as much money on the inferior product as you are on the, on the leather product. You'll buy a leather jacket and it doesn't change style, it doesn't go out of fashion. You know, it could be a bag, a leather bag or like a rucksack and you know, your outfit is almost straight away elevated to, to like, you know, a really nice outfit just from that one piece. If you're going to be spending your hard-earned money uh, on an item, you want it to be the real thing, you want it to be long-lasting, durable, and you want it to be sexy. I mean, that could easily be on a coach runway. That's fantastic. I mean, look at the style, the design. At the moment, my focus is vintage and historical clothing. A lot of the materials I see in my archival work the things that survive are the products that were meant to last. The leather and the old shoes and everything, that's all still, you could wear it out and it wouldn't fall apart. In the cover shot, I try to use a leather jacket if there is one, uh, because it's always the most beautiful shot, yeah. You know, the way it creases, you know, the way, uh, you know, you can choreograph a model, I guess, to pose and it has this robust kind of structure to it. Um, and you can form a lot of beautiful shapes and photos with leather. Consumers have unfortunately started to uh, lose their connection to natural materials like leather uh, and, and don't really understand what it is that they're purchasing or using um, in their everyday goods. Vegan leather, well, that's plastic. It's, it's fossil fuel based material. Real leather is real leather, it comes from animals. Now, I think the, 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 
there's a natural bias from from certain demographics in the consumer base to pick and choose the data they want to look for in a material. Leather alternatives have a place. And so brands, retailers, OEMs, they have a duty to provide for society that have those lifestyle choices. We need to look at the data. Our, our approach to this, to this matter is always science-based, data-driven. There are a number of indexes, indices out there that purport to measure the, the impact, the environmental impact or the, or the impact on the environment of various materials used in fashion and footwear. One of them is, is the Higg Index. The problem is the way the playing field has been set with these scoring systems, they're very much bent against uh, natural materials. For example, leather, cotton, wool, all of our, our natural materials we've been utilizing for thousands of years seem to then uh, become the, the worst option that could possibly out there for a brand to utilize. You're just looking at a scorecard and you're gonna say, okay, I think I'm gonna go with the plastic material here because this, this tool is telling me this is the most important one to use. So I think the conversation with sustainability is definitely there and people are talking about it, but there's also a lot of greenwashing that happens, especially from bigger brands that sort of claim that they're being sustainable when they're not.